it's time to perform the periodic costing run and calculate periodic unit prices for our materials. Until now, we have followed the regular period end closing process, but things will change during this lesson as we start using the actual costing cockpit transaction to run actual costing for our finished material. Let's navigate to actual costing run transaction using the easy access menu. You can also use T code CK MLCP if you don't feel like navigating the folder structure. As you can see, this transaction is looking a little bit like the regular costing run transaction CK40N. Just like with CK40N, you can start by creating a new costing run. Give a name and description for your costing run and select the period you are about to close. Select the plant we have been using. Using the black arrow, assign the plant to the costing run and then press save. Here you can see all the steps we need to perform. You always need to first click parameters, after which you can execute the step using the button here. After clicking execute, the system shows you the number of materials for which the costing run will be performed. In the next step, the system establishes the costing run sequence. I will just remove the background processing indicator, save the variant, and then press execute. The system will show you that costing will first be executed for raw materials and then for finished materials. In the next step, the system will calculate single level material prices using the price differences between standard costs and actual costs that were recorded into material ledger during the period. This single level calculation means that the system will still not consider the raw materials of a finished product when actual prices are calculated. In other words, raw material component prices are not yet rolled up for the finished materials. In the parameter settings, you can decide if you want to calculate prices again for materials that might have been already part of another costing run. You can also maintain some safety rules if you want the system to issue either a warning or an error message if the actual price calculated is a lot larger or smaller than the current standard price. This can be used to double check that no strange postings with huge price differences have been done during the period. Before you can execute the price calculation, you need to click this lock icon here once. The system shows us the number of materials for which a single level price was calculated. Let's open a new session and have a quick look at one of our raw materials using the material price analysis transaction. You can see that a new material ledger document has been created under ending inventory folder. When we open the document, we can see that this document includes all the materials for which we just performed single level price determination. Let's check what is posted for this raw material. We can see two tabs here, one for adjustments to consumption and one for adjustments to ending inventory. These price differences here are now the total sums where all the price differences that were posted during the period are summed up together. Here you can see the total single level price difference related to the consumption of this raw material. There is also a separate line for the exchange rate difference. As you remember, we modified the exchange rate between euro and yuan during this period and that is the reason for this difference. 
the exchange rate difference is only recorded for the group currency and not for Chinese yuan. On the next tab, you can see the total price difference related to the inventory that is left after consumption. The price here that the system has highlighted with green color is the periodic unit price of the material calculated using the actual cost of the period. When we look at the periodic status here, we can see that the first step, single level price determination, is completed. As we are looking at a material that does not have a bomb with raw material components maintained for it, the system is telling us that the next step, multi level price determination, is not required for this material. Let's also have a quick look at our finished pulp material. We can see that a periodic unit price is also available here, but let's see what happens to this price when we execute the next step of the actual costing process. The system is updating the statuses of the different steps in this transaction with a delay. To update the status of each of the steps, press this refresh button and select Direct Processing. Next, we will be using multi-level price determination to calculate periodic unit price for our finished material. This calculation will now take account the actual raw material prices calculated during the previous step. In the parameter settings, the system also provides us an option to only run costing for certain materials. As we are only interested in our finished pulp material, we can insert its material number here together with our manufacturing plant number. I remove the tick from the background processing checkbox and save the variant. After pressing execute, the system shows us that a multi-level price has been calculated for a single material. Now, let's refresh the material price analysis transaction and see what happens to the price. As you can see, the system has updated the single level price with a multi level price. This is now the final periodic unit price for the material. We can see that two new material ledger documents have been created. Under production, we can see a document for the receipts from lower levels. There is also a new document created for the multi level price determination. Let's have a quick analysis how this multi level price has been determined. So the new price is the sum between the preliminary standard material price and the total price difference allocated for the ending inventory. The total price difference is the sum of price differences from multi-level price determination and single-level price determination. So this figure is the sum of these two figures here, and this figure is the sum of these two figures here. You can also see that the single-level price difference is the same as the price difference of the order settlement. So this is where the single-level price difference is coming from. The multi-level price difference is the same as the price difference related to the receipts from lower levels meaning the purchases of raw materials related to the manufacturing of this product. Before you move forward, I recommend that you revisit all these material ledger documents and make sure you understand the logic behind all the postings. If you don't understand how a figure has been calculated, start reverse engineering the figures in Excel one at a time and seeing how each of the figures are connected. After you think you have a pretty good understanding of all the calculations the system has done so far, let's go back to the actual costing run transaction. The next step is the revaluation of consumption. SAP is using a little bit misleading name for this step. The revaluation of consumption here refers only to single level consumption cases and not for multi level consumption where raw materials are consumed against finished materials. Multi-level consumption revaluation is taken care of by the multi-level material price determination we did during the previous step. Single-level consumption happens, for example, when materials are consumed directly on a cost center level. In our costing scenario, we don't have any single-level consumptions, so we will not have any postings related to this step. 
but we still need to execute this step in order to move forward. As you can see, the system doesn't show us any results. The next step is to allocate price differences to work in progress materials. I remove the background processing indicator and press execute. The system tells us that materials and activities were processed successfully. We have now reached the step where we are actually posting all the calculations we have made during this actual costing run. So it's important to remember that no financial accounting postings have been made yet, but everything happens at once when we are executing this step. When we open the settings of this step, we can see that the system gives us options to select what kind of postings we want to perform. The first choice you can make is whether you want to reevaluate your materials. Now, I want you to pay special attention because the way the system is working related to the material revaluations is a little bit confusing. If you keep this checkbox activated, you will probably make the most logical conclusion and think that the system will revaluate the materials using the periodic unit prices calculated in the previous steps, and the periodic unit prices will be updated as the new standard prices of the materials. But this is not what will happen. Even if you have activated the checkbox here, the system does not update the standard prices of any of the materials yet. What happens is this. The system will create a posting for the last day of the period that will reevaluate the stocks of all your materials using the new periodic unit prices. But at the same time, another posting is created. This other posting will reverse all the material revaluation postings during the first day of the new period. The materials will still be evaluated using the original standard prices, so the price differences recorded during the previous period are just transferred to the next period. I have tried to visualize what is happening in this slide. So during a certain period, all the price differences between standard prices and actual prices are recorded in different price difference GL accounts. At the end of a period, the price differences are posted to the material inventory accounts which will revaluate your stock. But these postings are immediately reversed on the first day of the next period, and the price differences are moved back to the price difference GL accounts. So what happens is that the price difference allocated for the period end inventory is moved for the beginning inventory of the next period. We will later examine the steps needed to actually reevaluate materials and update their standard prices. Note that the debit and credit sides in this slide will be reversed if the material price difference is negative instead of positive. In this case, instead of using a debit posting that will increase the stock value, there will be credit postings from inventory GL accounts to price difference accounts which will decrease stock value. If you don't tick this checkbox, the system will not be doing revaluation re postings, but the price differences are posted to material ledger accruals and deferrals GL account that is assigned to LKW transaction key. The posting rules can be examined from the automatic account determination configuration. The next two options relate to the single level consumption we talked about earlier. If you keep these checkboxes ticked, single level consumption will be revaluated in the corresponding GL accounts and controlling account assignments will be updated alongside the FI accounts. You can first execute this step using test mode before making any actual postings. When we try to execute the post closing step, we will receive an error message saying that we are not allowed to post closing entries for the current period. We can only do the postings for the previous period, which means that before we can finish this step, we need to close the current period and open the next one. If you still want to expand your scenario and do more material movements or production orders in the system for the current period, this is your last chance to do so. In the next lesson, we will close the period and finish the actual costing run.